Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to make a woven look basket on your Addy Knitting Machine. So for this project, you're going to need your Addy Knitting Machine. I'm using the Addy King today. You could do this on the Addy Pro, though, and make a small miniature basket. I'm using some um, worsted weight yarn. You need at least worsted weight, if not bulky weight yarn. Um, but not anything thinner than a worsted. You can't really use like sport weight or baby, you know, fingering or anything like that because it will be too floppy. And you're also going to need a loom pick. Now, if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend getting one. This project is going to be extremely difficult if you don't have one of these, but these are very inexpensive. Any place where they sell um, knitting looms, the hand ones that you use the loom pick on, they usually sell these too. So my machine is set to plain knitting mode, which is for flat panels. This project is basically one single flat panel. And what we're going to do to make it, not only make it woven look, but also to make it sturdy enough so that it will stand up and not be just totally floppy, um, we're going to do kind of a tucked technique, not like a tucked stitch, but kind of like a tucked row or more of a, um, a pleated or, you know, pulled up kind of row. And I'll show you how we do that in just a minute. We're going to start with the first white needle over here. And we're going to cast on for a flat panel. Like so, all the way around. And we're going to put the yarn in the yarn guide. So you're going to clear your row counter. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to, every um, after every six rows, we're going to be bringing all of the loops from a previous row back up onto the needles, on top of the ones that are already on the needles. So I'm going to knit six rows back and forth of my flat panel, and then I'm going to show you how to tuck the rows. All right, so that's my sixth row, and I just want to mention that this is a project that, you know, normally on a flat panel, you kind of tug on the yarn a little bit to get tighter edges. You don't really want to do that. You just want to, you know, pull on it enough so that it will catch properly, but you don't want to have a super tight edge on this. So that was my sixth row. I'm gonna move this up just a little bit so you can see it. So as we turn around to go back, I'm going to find my very first um, cast on edge yarn, which is right here. Basically, we're going to follow the needle down to that first stitch, that first horizontal bar. It's, it's hardest to see on the edge, so I'll show you better on the next one. We're gonna bring it back up over the top of the needle and make sure that it goes down to the base of the needle. And as the next needle comes up, we're going to do the same thing. So especially on this first row, the first uh, tucking row, you do not want to catch the cast on yarn. So make sure you are pulling that cast on yarn up and out of the way. And we're not pulling the loops that are around the cast on yarn. We are pulling the horizontal strands, the wider ones, that line up with the needles. And you always want to make sure that as you do this, you are always pulling that stitch down to the base of the needle so that it actually gets caught in the stitch and doesn't, you know, get stuck in your needle. Basically, you don't want it up here in the hook. You want it down here at the bottom so it can pull new yarn through because we are basically now knitting through the current row that's at the base of the needle plus the first row. So I'm just going to keep um, pulling up these stitches from that very first row all the way around until I get back to the other edge of my flat panel. All right, so now I've made it around and done that entire row of tucking. And now we're basically gonna do the same thing again. Now, this first time of tucking the very first row is um, slightly harder than all of the following ones because we had to pick up off of that very uh, cast on edge without getting the cast on yarn. All the rest of them are going to be a little bit easier. And the kind of the most important thing that you want to try to do when you're doing a technique like this is to try to always make sure that you're pulling the exact same row all the way around 
And part of the way you can tell that is because when you pull on a strand of yarn, it should pull some of the slack from the stitch you just put over the previous needle. So now we're going to knit back and forth another six rows in our flat panel. All right. Now, every time we finish our six rows and then we go to tuck our um, first untucked row, you're going to end up on the opposite side of the panel. So the last time I did the row of tucking, I did it starting from this end, and now this time we're going to be starting from this end. We're going the other direction, but the technique is still the same. So this time, when we go to pick our stitch that we're going to pull, if you look here, um, the row of stitches that we tucked is going to have a double strand of yarn on the stitch that was, um, you know, stacked with the one from the row below. So what we've got here is kind of a ridge of double thick or double strand stitches. So we're going to pull the stitch that went through that double strand. So here's my edge here, here's the double strand. I'm going to pull on the um, stitch that came through that double strand of yarn. And again on the next one, I'm going to go over to this next stitch and pull the one that is coming up through the double strand stitch. So here's the next one again. Here's that double strand one. It's got two strands of yarn. I'm gonna pull the next one up from that, which is the one that originally went through it. And we're always going to be, if we're pulling the correct one, and we're staying consistent and always pulling from the same row, then as we pick up the next one, so here's the next one, it should always, we pull on it, should always take slack out of the one from the previous needle that we just did. So as I pull on this, it takes the slack out of the previous needle, which is what we want. And that tells us that we are pulling from the same row consistently all the way across. So I'm gonna keep tucking this one all the way across. All right, so that was my um, row of tucking. And you can't really see what the underside looks like yet until I get a little further and can actually turn it up where you can see it. But um, I'm going to continue repeating that sequence, doing six rows and then doing a row of tucking from the stitch that goes through the previous tucked row or the double strand stitch. All right, so I have finished my tucked panel and basically what we have here is here's our um, right side of the tucked section. It's very um, kind of ridged and textured. And so what's gonna happen is this part right here is gonna be the outside of our basket. Obviously it's inside out right now, but we're gonna sew these side edges together and then we're gonna make a bottom section that we're going to cinch closed, kind of like a flat circle or a hat would be cinched closed. So what I've done here is I've knit my tucked section until it is the length that I want my basket to be tall. Um, I'm going for kind of a more shallow basket. This is gonna be about five and a half to six inches tall. Um, but if you wanna do a taller one, go ahead. You can just continue this section for longer. And I've already knit a few rows of regular uh, stockinette, just going back and forth at like a normal flat panel. Um, but what we want to do is for the base of our basket, we want a total of about 18 rows. So I've got six here. I'm going to keep going until I've got 18 total rows of just regular stockinette stitch knitting on my panel. All right, so that is my last row. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the yarn that is my working yarn right now, and I'm going to cut it and I'm gonna leave a pretty decent length. I've got probably a good yard or maybe a little over a yard. I'm gonna take it out of the yarn guide and now I'm going to basically just pick up all of the stitches 
off of the machine with a yarn needle. I've got a bent tipped uh, chibi right here. This is one of the thicker ones in the bent tip set. So I'm going to just go around here and pick up all the stitches off of the machine, just like you would for many other Addy projects. All right, so that is going to be the base of the bag, and now we are done with the machine. So here's kind of what our panel looks like right now, and it's very um, ridged and bumpy looking on the outside. Kind of has a little bit of an irregular texture, and here is the bottom section of our panel that we did just straight stockinette stitch knitting. So while I have this on my yarn needle, I'm gonna take this and pull it tight and cinch the bottom end of the flat panel closed as though it were a circle. And I'm gonna take a stitch in the opposite edge like that to kind of close that up and pull it super tight, as tight as I can get it, and then I'm going to make a knot. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, this is gonna be the base of our bag, it's gonna lay flat, and this part is going to be sturdy enough to stand up on its own once we sew the sides of it together. So I'm gonna take my yarn needle and the yarn that I have, and I'm just going to mattress stitch the edge of this side of the stockinette to this side, and that's going to give us a circle instead of a uh, flat panel. All right, so I'm going to continue my mattress stitch until I get to kind of the edge of this first ridge where it ceases to be the flat base of the bag and starts to go up. So that is about it right there. And I'm going to kind of go ahead and mattress stitch down the other side of that ridge. And so what we're going to do is we're now going to, as you can see how this is going to work, once that we get this part to stand up on its own, we're going to sew the side of this basket up like that. So basically what we're going to do is kind of mattress stitch these layered ridges together. So I'm going to take um, from the column on that side and come over here and get a couple on this side. And then we're just gonna go up into the next one. And so now we're at the peak of that ridge. Now we're gonna fold it down and go into the other side of it. And then up into the next one. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I get basically to the top edge of the basket. And this is going to give us kind of the most invisible seam we can possibly get with this type of fabric. All right, so I've made it to the top edge. So that is what our seam looks like. It is still visible, but it's not like super obvious or ugly. Now, what you could do for this top edge here, all I've done to this was the cast on edge is I just pulled on the yarn while it was on the machine until um, it laid straight so that it wasn't all bubbly while I was knitting. Um, that's not necessary, but that's what I did. And what you could do is you could either take that cast on yarn out of all of those stitches and then bind them off. But in this case, because of the nature of the fabric and because of the way this edge kind of folds, I'm just going to take the cast on tail, make sure that you've got you know enough in there that it's not going to be like cinched tighter, but you just want to have it you know be able to stand up and lay straight. I'm going to tie the cast on tail together with the tail that's on my yarn needle in a double knot without pulling on the length of it any. 
And what we're going to do is bury these tails. Now again, this is not a method I would normally use for very many other projects because this is not a true um, cast on edge or bind off edge. It's kind of just a set of live stitches with the yarn running through it. But in this case, um, I personally don't feel that the, uh, if we were to do like a, a crochet hook bind off, I would be concerned that it would pull the length of the edge in too much because normally with regular stockinette stitch like down here it's it when, when it comes off the machine it is pulled lengthwise and it kind of evens out the stitches so that we have these neat columns whereas this um, these ridges were formed while they were on the addy and because of that because of the way that this fabric is constructed as you can see, um, the knitting is not, it has not been stretched lengthwise, it's been stretched widthwise. So that kind of scrunches all of the, um, the knitting, the columns, actually kind of more spreads them out so that they're wider. And I would just be afraid to do a uh, regular crochet hook bind off because of that. We don't want to kind of close the edge and cinch it you know, tighter than what it is. So I'm going to do this kind of just tie the tail together with the seaming yarn. For this project, this is again, not a technique that I would use on very many things, but just because of the structure of the fabric, I'm gonna do that in this case. So now what we're gonna do is just bury the yarn tails in between one of the ridges. And this is actually super, super easy because we can just kind of wiggle it through and just kind of into one of those channels, weave it into one of those channels and it will hide in there and stay buried in there. And I'm going to do the same thing with the remaining uh, yarn tail. Just bury it into one of these channels. All right, so there is the finished basket. As you can see, the bottom on this one is kind of a little bit long. And I think that is also because the rigid part of the sides of the basket are stretched widthwise, and therefore it's a different kind of ratio of length to width than the stockinette. But I think this it actually works out pretty well because you know, you've got some extra padding on the bottom where this bunches up, you know, to make it a little bit thicker. If we made a technique on the bottom that was thicker, other than just like an ordinary uh, flat circle, then the basket would be so thick at the bottom that you wouldn't be able to cinch it if we did, you know, anything other than like a normal large flat circle. So if you don't want it to kind of pouch like that at the bottom, you can always do less rows, maybe 14 or 15 rows of the regular stockinette for the base of your bag. You can also do this technique to make a basket on your little Addy, the Addy Pro. So you would do basically the exact same technique, only you would again knit until your tucked section is the height that you want your basket to be. And you would do about eight rows-ish for the base of the basket. So here is what our basket looks like from the side. This is a relatively simple and straightforward project to make, but I don't know that I would recommend it to an absolute beginner, mainly because um, the tucking is a little bit uh, time consuming compared to just cranking and cranking and cranking. And it's kind of something that you need to be able to kind of read the, the knitted fabric to be able to tuck the right stitches, but if you've, if you've done some Addy projects before and you're pretty comfortable using the machine and you kind of understand the structure of the knitted fabric, then this should be a pretty simple, straightforward project to knit. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.